Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are actually going to talk about a new story that Donny Cates co-plotted, I guess, with Al Ewing that has Venom in it. And that is the latest issue of Thor, issue 27, came out I think a couple weeks ago. And I'm sorry, I'm just getting to it, but uh, I sat on my counter for a while and I was like dreading reading it on some level. But then when I opened it up, I was like, all right, well, it's got Salvador Larocco doing the artwork and I'm a big fan of Salvador Larocco. So I was like, okay, I'll uh, I'll dive into this real quick. And uh, I actually found myself kind of enjoying this. Um, the story, like I said, is plotted by Al Ewing and Donny Cates, but the script is written by Al Ewing. I still feel like probably Donny had some say in the script. I don't know that for sure, obviously, but there's a couple moments in here where I'm like, oh, these feel very Donny Cates-ish um, dialogue-wise. But it's still um, soon after I'm like, OK, this feels very Al Ewing dialogue. So I'm sure there was a probably a tighter collaboration there, but I don't know for sure. Uh, I'm just going off of like me kind of knowing both of their styles or thinking I know their styles and giving my opinion on that. Um, but this story is called Venom of Asgard. This is part one. And like I said, you can pick it up at your local comic shops today. So without knowing really what's happening in Venom and Thor, uh, I was kind of a little lost at first because... I was like, oh, you know what? I, I don't know what's happening here. Thor is talking about the Bifrost being destroyed and he's talking to Mjolnir and it talks back to him. So I was kind of like, what, what's up with that? So I went back and read the intro page and I'm glad I did uh, because it helped fill me in on what's been happening. Uh, so yeah, kudos to, uh, you know, even though it's a simple design, which you know me, I'm always, I would always like an image uh, put in there or a couple images to help narrate some of the words that are being said here. Cause hey, it is a comic book. But uh, I understand you sometimes you got to get a lot of information on these pages. So, um, but Will Moss, the editing team of this, Michelle uh, Marchese or Maches, um, and uh, C.B. Sabolsky is the editor in chief at Marvel. Uh, but obviously, Will Moss and Michelle, uh, I you know I don't know exactly what some editors contribute and don't contribute. I don't know how you know interactive they are with helping with plotting stuff or if they just give feedback and it's up to the writer to. You know, I know what I did as an editor, but I know not everyone does it. And I know Marvel has their own way of pumping stuff out and getting stuff out there. But I will say this felt at least like a, a cohesive book. Um, now, granted, uh, typically with Donny Kate stuff, the first issues are always pretty decent and they pull you in. And then they usually fall apart by the end because I feel like he doesn't know really how to end stories a lot of times. Um, but uh, but this one, you know, like I said, it has Al Ewing doing the script. So I could at least tell in the dialogue, like, OK, this is a different voice on some of these characters. Even Eddie, uh, Eddie shows up as, you know, the king in black. And he even he's kind of, well, he's whimsical, I guess, in some way, but he's not really a goofball. And kind of that's how I always kind of see Eddie as like this goofball who tries, you know, and uh, but there's still a little bit of silliness with him, I guess. So uh, so I don't know if Al Ewing really has a handle on Eddie. But then again, this is an Eddie who is been through time, I guess, because like I said, I haven't caught up on Venom yet. Um, and then also is a god, essentially, of symbiotes. So it's a different Eddie. So I can kind of, I guess, forgive that on some level um, or understand it, I should say, too. Uh, you know, so anyway, the book starts off and it has Thor kind of reminiscing. And like I said, I read the the previously on Thor had turned into a Hulk, I guess. I guess he got exposed to gamma radiation, got turned into a Hulk. And while he was Thor Hulk, he smashed the Bifrost and destroyed it completely. Um, but then also, I guess, previous to that, his father Odin died in battle and his consciousness, I guess, got put into Mjolnir. So now we have a Thor who's kind of like Venom. He has a voice in his head that he talks to. Only this is the voice of his father. But that also feels very Donny Cates where <laughs> it's like he writes his daddy issues out in comic books. So now you have Thor talking to his dad, you know, and you have a father-son story in that regard much like you had a father-son story in his Venom run with uh, with Dylan and stuff and Eddie. So, but it, it's fine. I mean, it's kind of built into a lot of these Marvel characters. I, I think She-Hulk pointed out recently in her last episode that a lot of characters have daddy issues. <laughs> she mentioned a lot of guy characters that did, but I'm like, hey, Nebula and Gamora kind of did with Thanos. So uh, anyway, um, but yeah, so the story is that Thor is trying to rebuild the Bifrost. So he goes to, you know, look for Loki and he says, hey, brother, I need your help. Can you, you know, help me build the Bifrost, rebuild it? And Loki's like, well, I know a lot of different magics and stuff. And he's like, maybe we can. He goes, but why don't you just use Earth technology, teleportation? Like, they figured out between Krakoa and Iron Man and all these characters, like, they can 
teleport you around if you want to go places and they're your friends. And he's like, yeah, I would rather have something independent of that just in case those things, you know, fall apart one day. So Loki's like, okay, I'll, I'll figure this out. Um, and then Thor's also like, hey, where's Donald Blake, by the way? Because I guess at some point Donald Blake separated. At one point him and Thor were one body and Donald Blake became his own entity. So I, like I said, I haven't been reading Thor, but I guess Loki has Donald Blake in a prison somewhere and his eyeballs are constantly being eaten out by snakes or something, uh, something really cool like that. So I was like, all right, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's uh, maybe I will have to go back and read this Thor run. Um, so anyway, so Th so Thor and, and Loki are trying to team up. They bring Sif in, and the three of them are trying to rebuild the Bifrost. But then a symbiote shows up when Loki opens up a portal to bring in materials to build the Bifrost with, I guess. And this being shows up, and he's covered in a symbiote. Uh, and he looks like maybe a carnage type symbiote. And then even Thor says the word carnage. He's like, what is this carnage? Um, but it turns out this is actually Darkoth, um, the death demon, way back from Thor 325. Um, so that's pretty cool that they reference an old uh, villain uh, whose real name is Desmond Pitt. But he's, uh, like I said, he's like a death demon, comes from hell, and uh, he fought Thor before. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool you brought him back. And now he's covered in a symbiote that when Venom shows up, reveals it's a symbiote from Bedlam. Like, I guess Bedlam's a new villain in the Venom book. Again, I'm lost there uh, on some level. I think I heard the name before, but anyway, this is one of Bedlam's children. And so Thor and Venom have to team up to, you know, try to stop him. But uh, there's a lot more power to uh, this demon with the symbiote than even they're prepared for. So I don't want to spoil everything. I want to kind of keep some of the ending here um, loose and maybe we can talk about that more uh, when we do the next issue review so I don't want to get into the spoilers of the final few pages but something interesting definitely does happen there's a, a type of metal from hell that can hurt venom and also Thor I guess and it's inside this death demon and this symbiote is able to bring that out and they they kind of um, do something unique with it <laughs> I don't want to say anymore uh, but it's pretty cool because it's a neat cliffhanger and it, I'm intrigued. I mean, like, you know, I like Thor, the character. I've never, I've only read really the Walt Simons and stuff and a cup and some of the Skrzynski stuff and maybe some of the 90s stuff when, with the Donald Blake character. Um, but that's it. I mean, I don't have like a, a, a dearth of knowledge um, on, uh, on Thor or anything like that. Or, uh, you know, my, my, I'm, I'm limited. Um, but this seemed kind of neat. And I, you know, the, the all father thing, like Thor's the new all father. Now he's, you know, king of, of Asgard and he's talking to his father in the hammer. I mean, I guess that is kind of new in a way for Thor, at least to my knowledge. So it's a way to tell new Thor stories and still have his father around. But to me, I feel like becoming the all father without guidance is more interesting for a character, um, you know, because then they have to figure things out for themselves. And I, I probably would have preferred that, but, uh, but it does add for some humorous moments. And I kind of do like levity when it breaks up stuff. Sometimes I don't like it when it's forced and overused, but I thought this was a pretty decent balance. And so I'm going to definitely review the next couple issues, however long the story is three or six issues or whatever it is. Um, I'll definitely review it here in the Venom blog because it does feature Venom and it does feature um, him as the King in black. And I haven't read any of those stories yet. So it's, it's neat to get a peek into that. But I will catch up on Venom, uh, the current run by Al Ewing. I will catch up on that soon because uh, obviously Dark Web is coming up and I want to be caught up on the Spider-Man book, the Venom book, the Carnage book. I want to be caught up on everything before that comes out. So we will definitely do that on this show you know, in the coming weeks for sure. So thank you so much for watching the show. Let me know if you've read Thor number 27. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.